students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Organic Chemistry module. This is video number 31 and we're looking at our second of our addition polymers which is PVC. So once again as we looked at previously and you're going to see this over and over again the key things we're looking for here is the structure, the properties and the uses. Now that we've already had a look at polyethylene we're now in a position to start to see why some of these slightly different Monomers are producing slightly different polymers and how that affects their properties, uh, their structure, of course, and their uses. So let's have a look at polyvinyl chloride. One of the key things when we're looking at polyvinyl chloride is the fact that the monomer is different. So this is the monomer. And you can see the only difference between um, vinyl chloride monomer or um, what we might also call this is chloroethene. Uh, is the presence of this chlorine atom. So it's actually substituted for one of the hydrogens, and so now our ethene has become a chloroethene. And of course, when this polymerizes, what we have is the uh, potential for bonds to form between each of these different monomers. And so as you build up this molecule, you can see that we're going to have uh, alternating chlorines. Probably would be better to show these two switched backwards and forwards. Just used a bit of chem sketch here and sometimes it uh, uh, just flicks them around a little bit. But if you consistently show every second carbon has a chlorine on it in the same position, you're kind of showing that polymerization process is going to occur consistently. You can see that that appears on the um, diagrams below. So you can see again, here's our vinyl chloride monomer. And here's how we might represent it. Um, here's the opening of the double bond in the same way that we showed that for the process of um, polymerization of polyethylene and our um, every second carbon now having this chlorine atom uh, attached to it and this long um, N number of monomers to produce these long chain polymers. So what difference does the presence of the chlorine atom make in PVC? Well, PVC probably, um, if you are thinking about polyvinyl chloride, you're probably thinking about um, electrical piping or plumbing piping. So the sorts of pipes that are used um, to uh, attach a lot of our important um, kitchen, bathroom kind of um, rooms in our home um, to the different systems that are designed to either deliver water or to remove wastes. So uh, obviously these things need to be insoluble in water if they're going to be used as uh, water transport systems then obviously we don't want them breaking down and of course the fact that they're inert as most polymers are they're not going to be um, breaking down readily in the um, uh, as water is passing through them. The good insulators as well which obviously makes them useful for um, uh, insulate, uh, insulation. Um, the chlorine substituting for the hydrogen does create a dipole. So obviously the, the difference between chlorine and hydrogen is in their electronegativity and therefore um, we're going to have polar bonds occurring between the chlorine and the carbon atoms where the chlorine is much more electronegative so it uh, wins the tug of war between the chlorine and the uh, carbon for those electrons and also the fact that chlorine has um, seven valence shell electrons and only one of those is involved in bonding means it's going to have a large number of unpaired electrons as well. So we've got this real center of uh, negative, uh, a region of negative charge if you like and that is going to influence both the um, properties of this particular polymer and how it's used. Um, if you've ever handled PVC, you know it's very lightweight, but it's still quite hard and rigid. So that um, presence of that chlorine atom really does increase the rigidity, increases that link or that bond between um, different chains of PVC and holds them nice and tightly together. So it does make them a little bit on the um, brittle side. They can snap. Um, they're not sort of uh, malleable, you can't sort of really bend them. Having said that though, we are able to shape these as you can see into the sort of the different joins and things that we need to uh, produce for um, uh, our many uses. 
that we make of PVC. There's a little bit of resistance in terms of uh, flame resistance, uh, acid resistance, and the presence of the chlorine atom does also increase the uh, melting point. So there's a couple of different types of uses for PVC, and I've just sort of outlined one of these. But what you can do is add to your table of polymers. You can see I've included the same table that I've, I've put in and will continue to do so. And what I want you to do is just to continue as you're going through each of these. So we've got vinyl chloride is our monomer, or um, chloroethene if you prefer. And then making sure that in those structures that we're, we're alternating for our carbons, our hydrogens, with our chlorines. Just so we show that as the monomers are building together to produce this long chain, that we've got those alternating carbon chlorine um, bonds occurring here. And of course, that electronegativity, that polarity that's occurring in that particular bond. And that's just slightly changing our properties, which also uh, influences our uses. This is one of these areas where it's really important for you to go into the sort of depth that you want. We want to give you just a, a good, quick overview of. Uh, some of the key differences between all these different polymers, but I think it's good for you to have a nice um, uh, organized structure that allows you to uh, keep as deep a set of notes as you'd like for each of these. Again, the process of polymerization is not, I think, a key part of this, but actually understanding the link between structure, properties, and uses is. Thanks for watching.